In this tutorial I will use Evolute tools together with T-splines in order to show you the potential of this combination of tools for modeling freeform architecture. I will only use the base module of Evolute tools and I will start with a really simple T-spline surface. You can model this just in a few minutes. It's a really simple box without bottom and a few faces extruded out. What I really like about T-splines is that if you want to model some kind of really intricate and crazy architectural object, you can do that with a single surface, a single T-spline surface. That's really nice if you have to modify it later. You can just drag its vertices around or do some kind of transformations to it. So let's say this is our architectural object for the moment and if we want to panelize this with Evolute tools, we'll have to start the creation of a coarse mesh. And if your shape is really crazy and intricate, you sometimes you might have a hard time building up that coarse mesh. But the nice thing about working with T-splines is that if you have the T-spline surface, you automatically have a coarse mesh. So let me just show you how that works. So I'll just copy this T-spline surface. I'll put it in a different layer so we can distinguish between them. And I'll just go to box mode. So if we check this object now, this is just a T-splines mesh and in order to subdivide it we'll have to turn it into a regular mesh so I'll do that by welding I'll use a 0.1 tolerance there this is ready if we check this object out this is now just a regular mesh so this is ready for subdivision okay so let's do some Catmull Clark subdivision on this one not too dense and this is now subdivided, this is nice and smooth so we can actually optimize this so first we will force it to take the shape of our input surface and I will set this T-spline surface as a reference check the optimization parameters, we've got the default surface closeness and curve closeness I'll just put a bit of uh, fairness curvature, let's say 0.4 and I will start to optimize. Let's pick the mesh and go for it. Nice! At this point I can hide this T-spline surface. We can have a better look at our panelized object. So this is pretty nice and smooth. Because of the fairness we have a bit of movement here because the optimization algorithm will try to straighten those lines but we can get rid of this for example, we can just select a vertex, put it somewhere else and force it to stay there. So I just set it as a fixed vertex and if we optimize again, now it's a bit better. It's not that the geometry is nice and tight is, and it's got less twist there. Okay, so this is now optimized we can check out the closeness to our reference surface Let's set the range so we're now in inches now we can just use the drop down menu let's go to centimeters and we have like half a centimeter in deviation which is not really bad it's actually pretty good and as I said I'm only using the base version so if we wanted to optimize for planarity um, I should have installed the planarity module so in case you have the planarity module, if you have bought it, you can pick up from here and just optimize these quotes for planarity. Let's set this range and, well, 2.4 centimeters is not that bad. Okay, so let's go on with the optimization. I'll actually delete this object and let's resurface the T-spline surface. Let's say that for some reason you have to add a lot more floors to this uh, building. So let's continue the modeling. So this is one of the nice things about working with T-splines. You can really easily adjust or modify your model. So I'll get the manipulator here, select faces and extrude this out
about this height. So we now turn this into a tower. I don't like the top part, so I'll just delete some faces here. And I will do a bit of editing on the faces just to make this a bit more interesting. I'll add a bit of rotation to these faces. Yeah, this should do it. So now we modified our T splines object, and basically, if we didn't use T splines, we would have had to start all over again with the paneling. But since we use T splines, we can use the same trick again. So I'll just copy this object, put it into a different layer, go to box mode. So again, this is a T-splines mesh, and I will turn it into a regular mesh just by welding. This is now ready for subdivision. Um, you will notice that the density of the panels in the top part of the tower here is a lot lower, so we can use loop cut to get a bit more density. That should do it. Alright. Again, just drag it roughly over your input surface. I will set this surface as a reference. And we can start the optimization. Good. Now let's just subdivide this to get a lot more density. Catmull Clark a few times delete it and optimize again. If this is not dense enough, of course you can subdivide further. I will just hide the T-spline surface for a moment so we can have a better look at our object. Again we have a bit of movement here because of the fairness parameter and we can get rid of that by simply moving a vertex, set it fixed and optimize again. So this is just plug and play push button paneling. It's so easy and it's so fast. You just modify the T-spline surface and you automatically get the coarse mesh. If the density is not high enough in some areas you can just use loop cut or other local subdivision rules. We can simply subdivide this with a diagonalize algorithm to make it a bit more interesting. Optimize again and check the closeness to our reference surface. Let's set the range. So we are now down to almost 3 centimeters. But of course the object is a lot bigger now. Now let's say that for some reason you will have to modify your architectural object and build an annex or something because you don't have enough floor space on the ground floor. So I will delete this object, resurface the T-splines object and just figure out a way to add a bit more space. I will clear the reference and I will extrude some faces. So let's select faces all right, and extrude them out. You went to box mode. We have a few set faces here we can delete. We don't need the bottom, and it's smooth again. Let's modify this just a tiny bit. Get a bit more height there. And again, you will normally have to create a coarse mesh, subdivide and then optimize. But since we have a T-spline surface, we can just copy the object. I'll put it in a different layer. Go to box mode. 
and weld it just to turn it into a regular mesh. Now it's ready for subdivision. I will set this as a reference and subdivide the coarse mesh. Let's use Getmore Clark. Just a tiny bit of subdivision there. Roughly drag it over your reference and optimize. So it just couldn't be easier and faster. I'll hide the T splines. This is not very dense. I'll subdivide again. Let's do diagonalize. Let's do a Ketmel Clark again. You can just play with the subdivision algorithms and optimize it. So using T-splines together with Evolute tools is just one of the fastest way of paneling a freeform surface and of course for optimizing a freeform surface. If we had the planarization module at this point we could have optimized all these quads and turned them into planar panels. We only have the base module installed. I'll just subdivide further just to create some nice patterns. I will use square root and I will do a dual with boundary. So this is a really nice interesting pattern on our T-spline surface. Well it's a mesh, it's a poly mesh right now. Alright so this is it for this tutorial. There will be others showcasing the use of T-splines in combination with Evolute tools. Thanks for watching and keep an eye on our website for the next tutorials.